guys, I'm back again with uh, part two with my long overdue video uh, with my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, Paul Beckwith. We're having some minor collapses of global industrial civilization uh, here on uh, New Year's Eve 2017, which I think is a perfect springboard. This is a perfect example, Paul. Uh, of, of, of my problem and, and I think a lot of my listeners with uh, geoengineering, particularly the solar radiation management angles, we can't have a 45-minute conversation on Skype without something going wrong on the eve of 2018. And it's just the... It's, 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 it, it, that's the, the fear out there, and I want you to calm the fears of anyone thinking that particularly the, the sulfur into the stratosphere uh, is, is truly a way to address this problem. What, what, what do you say with people who are continuing to be nervous about this? Okay, well, first of all, um, the reason why the, uh, we're having these technical problems is it's completely expected because networks are designed for, you know, you know, average usage, mean usage, and then you have a peak usage. Uh, they're designed for some amount of peak usage, and if you built them to cover all cases, they'd be way more expensive. So, so there are outages from time to time, different places, and it's a day before it's New Year's Eve, so nobody's working, not many people are working, everybody's on the web, and the bandwidth is just exceeded. I was um, on a main highway recently, the 401, and it was closed down. There was a truck on fire, so it backed up, and yeah. the cell phones stopped working because everybody in their car was sitting, calling somebody, and the local cell phone tower was swamped and... and uh, Broke. So you just have to cut. If you understand the technology and why things happen the way they do, it alleviates a lot of the stress. So, so with, um, I mean, with the geoengineering and sulfur in the stratosphere, people aren't really. They're they're not. The best way to alleviate fear about it is to just learn a bit more about it, right? To learn about, you know, what, how does sulfur, how does it. How does it work? Like, what does it do? It reflects a little bit of sunlight. Uh, what natural phenomena have done that? Well, volcanoes going off cause that to happen. What about the sulfur from smokestacks? Um, we burn coal. Coal is high in sulfur. So power plants, coal-burning power plants, have been putting sulfur up into the atmosphere for years. It's in the lower atmosphere. It gets washed out within about... Um, you know, a week, but it causes this thing called global dimming, right? So we know, you know, the stuff works. It dims the planet. It cools the amount. It, it reduces the amount of sunlight. So it's just trying to, you know, the learning to alleviate fear. The best thing is education, right? Because so uh, one just thing that a little bit about it. yeah, that I'm, I'm, I mean, since you know, I, I'm just some turnip seed who fell off a. Uh, I mean, I'm just some turnip who fell off a truck in Texas. I'm not an educated climatologist. But, but, but what I, one thing that I think about with these, uh, we're going to, just for ease of conversation, call these things chemtrails, is there any danger of us overdoing it and making the, the planet a little bit cooler than uh, than we expect than, than we were hoping for when we were mixing up our batch of chemicals. Any danger? You see what I'm saying of going yeah. too far yeah, with yeah. it? Yeah. Um, there's uh, we can't call them chemtrails because that that word's been forever poisoned, right? Yeah. But conspiracy. Um, so uh, well, the, basically, you know, it's a controllable technology. Right? You, you put a little... I don't know, is it? I, I'm not at all sure it is. 
you, you put a, you put a little bit in the atmosphere and you see how much cooling you get and then you put a little bit more in you get a bit more cooling and you know we have a good estimate of the amount that goes up into the at atmosphere from volcanoes based on the amount of mass loss of the volcano and uh, the power of the eruption or something called the vol BEE volcano explosivity index so you know whenever we, we have this rating scale for how powerful these things are and we can measure the like we have satellites that can measure the uh, optical depth if you like so how far how much light can get through the atmosphere at all different wavelengths um, and so it uh, that determines the number of particulates in the atmosphere right so we have all of these different technologies to monitor exactly what we're doing and uh, I guess the thing is, is okay, I mean, there's risk with everything we do in yeah. life, you know, the biggest risk you or I have is walking across the street, right? <laughs> so, so uh, you know, or having, uh, you know, the risk of, uh, you know, from being, uh, in, uh, you know, killed by a terrorist, uh, you, you have more risk of being shot by a toddler or having a, a coke machine fall on you. <laughs> Right? Or, or falling out of bed. That's a huge risk. Look at the number of people that die from falling out of bed. We don't have a homeland security, uh, you know, we, we never hear of, of these things being addressed, in, um, right? You got, like, like, be wary when you hear about one thing being magnified, being discussed. You know, you got to try, always try to think of the bigger picture. Put it in context with other risks, for example. Um, so the point is, is, how can we talk about the risks of everybody wants to talk about the risks of geoengineering right let's talk about the risks of what's happening to our climate I, you know you're saying you're telling me and a whole bunch of people are telling me the risk is that all humans go extinct in a very short period of time right so so if you're not talking about the risk of geoengineering well what's the risk okay we're all going, we don't do anything, we all go extinct in 10 years or 20 years. If we use geoengineering, is it going to make it... Well, yeah, I guess. Years or 18 years instead of 20? Is it going to extend it the <laughs> other way? Like, 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 you can't talk about it by itself. You have to say, if we don't do anything and just continue messing up the planet like we're doing, what's going to happen? What's the risk of that? So, like, like, whenever I hear people saying, oh, it's too risky to do geoengineering, they have no idea how serious the climate, yeah. the climate change is. Right? So, so, you know, you're not one of these people. You're very aware of the risks of of abrupt climate change and where it's taking us. So this is why I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm trying to get inside your your head and the thinking of people who are they put up their back and oh, geoengineering is bad. We can't do that. Like I don't understand. Well, no, mine I, is just my 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 point. I I make after you know, I, I've been. You know, studying this just as a layman for uh, for for eight years it is frying pan of the fire. This is why I'm right. always holding up my "We are so fuck" sign. Uh, it, it, like it, at this okay. point, I, I am I am a doomer, and it doesn't okay. matter. We, we, we're we're screwed either way, Paul. So uh, okay, it, you know. so you're not, but you're not talking about a, a frying pan at all. You're talking about the the fire to a hotter fire. <laughs> uh, it, right? it, it, yeah. Well, that, like, that's. Like, uh, I mean, what could be worse than than all humans going extinct? I guess the thing is, is some people, you know, say this wouldn't be such. It might be a good thing as long as other species can survive on the planet. But, well, right? that's my. Well, that that's that's Very my funny. rant. I I'm in full support of human extinction, but it's it's, yeah. it's the rest of the Earthlings that we share this planet with that never did anything to deserve this karma that I speak for. Uh, and and clearly, so what right. what do you see? What is climate change's contribution to the sixth mass extinction? Talk about our fellow, or let's stop talking about humans for a while. How is this going to play out as a player in the sixth mass extinction here in the Anthropocene? Well, the um, you know, uh, I mean, I've had as you mentioned some of the titles of my videos and stuff are pretty, you know, mayhem and this, you know, the, <laughs> some of the like they're they're pretty they're pretty uh, doobie headlines, right? Um, you know, I mean, we've lost three quarters of the flying insects in, in um, nature preserves in Germany, for example, oh, wow. in the last 20, 30 years. They've, they've, they've vanished, right? 
So, you know, and they're part of the base of the, of the food chain. So um, how it plays out is, you know, climate has always changed, right? Which is what the deniers, and, you know, that's there's no other word to describe deniers, but yeah. deniers, I mean, they don't like that term, right? But they're, the evidence is there and they, they just don't, believe it they don't they deny you know truth evidence scientific fact so they're not skeptics right skeptics are supposed to be that's a healthy thing right scientists consider themselves skeptics right they're always questioning always trying to poke holes in things uh, to find the truth right um so i guess um what's happening now is the rates of change are much much faster now than they've been in the history of the planet from what we can see if we look in paleo records and things you know temperatures went up a certain amount over a certain time and greenhouse gases uh, increased a certain amount over a certain time and you know those changes are happening now at least you know how much faster are they now well i mean at least 10 times 20 times 40 times maybe even 100 times faster and you can look at the extinction rates right now, the best we can do, and they seem to be way, way higher than the natural background rate, which is, you know, sort of the cycle of the way things have evolved and de-evolved on the planet. How much so, of that can, can, at this point, where we are now, uh, in, in, in the last day of 20, can, can, at this point, can we attribute the species uh, extinction rates of the last 30 years to climate change and do you see that altering and my view of it is is that it's only going to worsen rapidly and dramatically and it's going to become a much bigger factor in uh, in the six mass extinction do you agree with, with, with that yeah, basic uh, yes I mean so what's causing it um, climate change is by far the, the largest factor because of the rapid rate of change of temperature and the rate of change of greenhouse gases and the rate of loss of sea ice for example all these other factors ocean acidification stratification of the ocean all of these different things are all from climate change but there are other elements as well um and that is uh you know what humans are doing to the the the, the surface of the earth i mean we're changing the the vegetation you know we cut down rainforests and we uh we, we slash and burn them and then we plant uh, monoculture crops like palm oil for example you know in the where the rainforests were we we fragment the land so that the animals can't move to other regions they can't migrate because they run into roads or cities or con urban jungle or urban con you know concrete and they're just not able yeah. to migrate they they die off um, we have, you know, we've we've invested fortunes and, you know, great technologies, you know, science and technologies to make the best types of uh, pesticides and herbicides to kill off uh, things that we don't like. And, you know, think about the bacterial soap, for example, that people use all the time. Well, it doesn't just kill bacteria on your hand. You know, it can get washed into the yep. water. It can get washed into the soil. What about killing all of the bacteria and microbes in the soil that are healthy for the ecosystem to thrive? Um, you know, things like that. You know, what about the little micro pellets of plastic that are being ingested and working their way up the food chain and, and concentration of things like mercury and lead and stuff like that. So it's all of the standard, you know, pollution, all of the things that we do with consumerism, humans, you know, we try to, like, like we haven't factored in the environment as part of the equation. We ignore it. We think it's uh, infinite and plentiful and will always be there to support us. And we're getting a very, very rude awakening on this. You know, look at the population pressures, because, you know, the amount we consume is equivalent to the population, right, times the, you know, the per, per capita, you know, per person consumption times, you know, the, the, the you the know. Technology the technology is in there. The technology, yeah, exactly. Wow. The technology is, is improving. I mean, we've got big, huge machines that scour the surface of the earth in the tar sands. And the know, bottom of the long. ocean, more and more, the deep sea mining. The trawlers, yeah, and, and uh, you know, the trawlers let out lines that are 
20, 30, 50 miles long, and they scour the ocean bottom, right? Uh, you know, destroy all the benthic life down there just to catch a certain species of fish, you bycatch. I mean, we're, we're doing, you know, we're, we're on a, we're, 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 we're a suicidal species right now. Um, you know, uh, it, it's, you know, you'd think that we, the intelligence that we evolved would, would, would let us collectively, uh, you know, do something to maintain, a, you know, a, a livable earth, but we, we haven't, um, we, we failed miserably in, in doing this collectively, you know, everybody's individually competing to, you know, get ahead and, you know, we have jobs that keep us busy and distracted and there's propaganda, you know, and there's idiots in charge, you know, the, it's usually, you know, the, the cream is not going to the top, the cream, the cream <laughs> is, is sinking and being suppressed and the, all the, all the ponds, all the scum is getting, you know, sifting up to the top and, you know, and the problem is, is that it's going to get a lot worse with artificial intelligence, right? Because the uh, the more and more automation there is, the fewer and fewer people there are in charge of this automation. And these are the people that, you know, live like, you know, I say live like kings, they, they live like super kings or pharaohs. I mean, there's no historical analog to the power that, that people have. There's no other time in history when so much is being controlled by so few. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> Churchill talked about our finest hour, you know. No, never in the history of, 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 has so much been owed to so few, right? And, I can imagine he what he'd that, say uh, now. What would Winston be, be well, what he'd be sounding well, like now? Yeah, I mean, so much is owed to so few. I mean, look at that. That's what happens right now, although it's in a, it's in a bad way, not in a good way, right? <laughs> you know, and it's dollars that are owed. Not uh, survival of a country in wartime. So well, I don't hear I don't hear a lot of optimism coming. So let me as, as I as I tend no, to do no, toward. I, I mean, I'm, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's optimism, right? You're sounding like a doomer, Paul. You're sounding like one of us. No, no, I'm just saying. I mean, we <laughs> we're in a bad way, and we need to say it's an emergency, right? And we need to redo. We need to do things totally differently in order to survive. So if you're a doomer, you, you don't think it's ever going to happen. Um, and uh, you know, but the pain is going to get there. The pain's going to increase. You know, how? I mean, how? Where do you think the pain level is? You're you're saying there's no level of pain that can make people want to change their ways. Like, what about you know, if we lose a billion people on the planet, for example? You know, we get a we get a massive food shortage, food prices spike, there's global starvation, countries turn within. You know, what do we do? Do, do you think we start deploying technologies to try to cool the planet and restore a stable climate and you know do things differently? Like, like it becomes. You know, humans are, are a bit unpredictable, right? There are huge feedback in the system. And, you know, there's so many of us and our technologies are so high and our population still spiking up that, you know, we're in for a rough go, very rough go. But I guess I'm just saying that I think, you know, maybe a wall will be reached where, where people uh, start doing something. You know, maybe not. Maybe it'll require a loss of a big chunk of the population, but... To go to say that it's, you know, there, there's everybody on the planet is going to kill over, you know, you need to invoke some mechanism like an asteroid coming and, and or maybe a soul, maybe a, 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 soul, a, a pulse, maybe an electromagnetic pulse from the sun, right? Well, I think we're going to get one from North Korea is what it, what it sounds like before the, before the well, sun. Well, see, the thing is, is we just have to figure out how to... Um, you know, it, it's it's too bad we like the, if we have an electromagnetic, huge electromagnetic uh, burst from the sun, right? That propagates to Earth. It's like the luck of the draw. Like if North America is is on the backside, if the Earth is is you know the rotation of the Earth is such that North America is shielded by the planet, and then the re the other side of the world gets zapped, and all the electronics fail and everything. That would that would pretty much take out. You know, that would do a major, major damage to, to human societies, right? If North America happened to be facing the sun when the pulse came, then, you know, the, the other side of the world would, would gain dominance, right? We'd be, we'd be finished. We'd lose everything, right? So, so uh, you know, that like, like things like that can, 
<laughs> you know, so what's the probability? I mean, what's interesting is to look at all the risks of all of these different things together. And there, there's books written on that and so on. Um, you know, in terms of, um, you know, we've talked a lot about solar radiation management, a bit, you know, what we could do. We haven't talked about carbon dioxide removal too much, but there, there's, we can, we can suck vast amounts of CO2 out of the atmosphere quickly if we put our minds to it um, by using the uh, power of algae blooms in the oceans to extract huge amounts. And, um, you know, we don't think of the, you know, we live on the land. We only think of, of things on 30% of the Earth's surface. You know, when you hear about carbon capture and bioenergy with carbon capture and storage and all these different things, um, then, you know, we just, we're, we're land centric. Right, but there, there, there's a huge opportunity for the oceans to suck huge amounts of CO2 out of the atmosphere and to use that carbon to carry up the food chain to restore a lot of marine life and so on. And you know, we lost 90% of the large fish in the ocean. Think about all the carbon that would be in those fish if we restored the health of the oceans to what they were before. I'm all for it. Well, I'm, this has been, I, I could go on uh, having this conversation for we're up to, we're already up to an hour, but since it is New Year's Eve, and I, I just finished my own uh, predictions for 2018, and I know a lot of people are making their predictions today. What, what are, do you have any top four or five predictions for 20 what can we expect and be hearing from you uh over the next 12 what do you think you're going to be talking about in 2018 what are the big issues that you're going to be looking at in your own videos um well the the arctic is, is always there right i think we're going to see you know i think we're going to continue to see yeah, I, I think. Um, I mean, we're 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 seeing we're seeing an ongoing acceleration of extreme weather events and uh, an ongoing, um, you, you know, the, the, these floods and droughts and all of these things happening. They seem to be happening at a greatly accelerating pace, and that there seems to be a lot more instability in governments. Um, around the world there seems to be you know a lot of governments are turning very right wing and stuff and becoming very protectionist and stuff and these are all things that are you know you can relate all these things to root cause being uh, abrupt climate change uh, you know look at the uh, you know a lot of governments are you know claiming huge financial difficulties and uh, you know look at all the billion dollar disasters um, which aren't really factored into you know present economist thinking and things so we're, we're gonna see you know increased acceleration so that's across the whole board of, of climate change ocean acidification you know across the whole board um, you know methane levels will continue to be rising hopefully we don't have any burst or pulse or you know um, you know I, we're you know, the, the sea ice is gonna is there until suddenly it's gonna be gone and people are gonna say whoa I'm amazed I could never have believed this is gonna happen well what planet have you guys been living on <laughs> you know if you think if you're amazed that this is happening you know maybe we'll get a bit more realism in what scientists are saying about how the climate system is changing because I don't see it and I didn't really see it at the AGU conference in New Orleans I'm planning on attending a lot more conferences this year I'm, I'll probably go to the Ameri the European Geophysical Union conference in April. I'll try to you know crowdfund a bit for that. On my website, the American Association of Geographers has a big conference. Um, there, I wouldn't mind going to one specifically on the oceans. You know, I'll check out and see what Al Gore when his training session is. If it's in Chicago or you know he has a lot there. You know, I wouldn't mind going just to talking to people there and yeah. you know. Meeting him, and, and then there's the um, AGU um, in 2018 is going to be in Washington, D.C. in December. That's going to be a good one. I'd like to try to coordinate some people in the AGU with uh, citizens' climate lobby groups who go and lobby politicians. Because, you know, if you have 20,000 scientists in Washington, 
you know, surely you can get, you know, a, a percentage of them to, 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 to meet with some of the citizens climate lobby people and then go and lobby all of the, all of the dead wood, AKA politicians on, you know, on the hill and so on, uh, uh, capital on the capital, we call it the hill in Canada, <laughs> you know, capital, like, so. That's so what they call it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, um, the, the next um, intergovernmental panel on climate change, you know, the next COP is going to be in Poland, um, uh, you know, in, uh, it's not in Warsaw, it's in, I can't pronounce the name of the city, it's going to be in Poland. So, you know, as long as I can try, I'm going to try, I won't be traveling to the extent that uh, Mr. Guy does, uh, but Guy, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind attending uh, a few more of these conferences, trying to make an impact that way. Um, uh, you know, hopefully I can get some writing done on, on a book I, you know, sort of some projects that I've been thinking of doing and haven't had a chance to do much lately, you know, do a bit of teaching. Um, I would love to set up an op massively open online course to, to reach more people. Um, you know, so there's, there's lots of ideas. Um, also, um, I'm doing some work with a group called uh, Can See, which is, which is climate and nature society for engineers and technicians. So the idea is to educate, you know, it's, it's doing the same stuff, like the three-legged bar stool stuff, you know. We're in a climate emergency. We need to get better, get technologies for CDR and SRM. So who's going to be designing and developing those are the engineers. So the engineers need to be on board with the yeah, understanding how serious climate change is, which is not the case now. They don't understand that. And getting them to think about, you know, designing things that will get us out of this uh, the, 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 this, this problem. Um, and by the way, I, I looked up the word predicament, and the word predicament doesn't isn't something that, like, you can get out of predicaments. There's nothing in the definition of the word that means that it's a fixed state. So, <laughs> so you, sure. you take issue with, with, with people well, who... Who use well, that uh, definition of predicament? Well, I don't. I just it, just go to Webster's or Oxford and look up <laughs> the word predicament. Like I don't understand how that means that it's uh, you know something that you can't modify or can't change. Like people, that we well, we haven't done anything. Uh, let's be honest. I mean, humanity has done nothing to address climate change. I will really. agree with you on that it's one. Been, talk, 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 talk. You know. 20, 22 cops and uh, squat, right? <laughs> 22 cops and squat. There, uh, that, 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 that sums up, uh, yes, that sums up 22. Just real quick, I do, uh, since it's never come up, R real quick, your take on the uh, Paris Climate Accord to save the planet. Where, how do you stand on that? Is it, is it going to save us all? No, it's not. And I mean, the two degree and one and a half degree, those things are, are, you know, if we, when we're serious about, when countries are serious about climate, th there won't be any subsidies to fossil fuel companies, right? It's like, you know, try to keep the temperature to a certain limit. That's sort of an abstract thing. The targets need to be on, on gigatons of CO2 in the atmosphere emitted from humans, right? Is it, are we capping that? Um, are, are we going to limit it so much per year? You know, if we, we focus on those sort of things, because, you know, we're, we're, I mean, we're rapidly losing, losing the, 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 we've left it for so long, we have to take, you know, if we, if we started cutting fossil fuels years ago, we'd be in a much better situation. Obviously, uh, you know, we wouldn't have had to be, you know, for the record, I was completely against geoengineering for most of my life. But I study climate, I see how bad it is, what an emergency we're in, and I came to the conclusion that we have no other choice but to use yeah. these technologies. So so now it's trying, you know, and I know it's a huge battle, you know, most people are against it. The scientific community was completely against it, but at least they've come around now to CDR and they'll come around to SRM, I can guarantee you. I, I've been guaranteeing that for for years. I've uh, do, whatever yeah. my opinion is, I, I have always been predicting that there's it, it's 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 going to happen. Uh, yeah. It's clearly in the cards, so we can uh, right. walk but all we I mean, want to. Yeah, but I mean, you know, is it like 
it's not an all or nothing thing. People treat it as an all or nothing thing, and you know, people are, are so there's a lot of people that are terrified of this sort of thing. And I say just to go to a ski hill and watch them making snow and making clouds or something with the snowmaker, and you know, just stick something like that. Uh, you know, calcium carbonate particles in the atmosphere. It's just like salt, well, salt crystals, sodium chloride or calcium chloride you can put up. That's considered, you know, another way to act as cloud condensation nuclei to get very small um, water droplets to uh, cool the planet. So, yeah, there's loads of things, you know, it's not an all or nothing thing. The best way is to just, you know, read and learn a bit more about things, although it's hard because there's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of noise out there. So I consider, you know, all I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to cut through the noise and to emphasize what's important, uh, you know, versus, uh, you know, like, like yeah, I'm trying to give a signal in the noise to sort of... Uh, give us a, uh, a link to your, uh, to where we can, uh, yeah. I mean, most of our, my folks know it already, but go for the people who are not familiar with you, how, how can we hear more from you? Yeah, so my, my website is just um, Paul Beckwith, one word, uh, P-A-U-L-B-E-C-K-W-I-T-H dot net. So if you just uh, Google that or go there, or you can just um, Google my name, Google Paul Beck with climate change, and it, you know it'll find all kinds of links, uh, you know, galore on on stuff. So you can just have a, have a look at look at that. Oh, those are the easiest ways. And your uh, YouTube channel, of course, your fine yeah, YouTube channel, yeah, which is yeah, the, the YouTube channel. Yeah, I mean that will come up. If you just Google Paul Beck with climate change, you'll find all the links and stuff. But um, yeah, so it's all there. Yeah. All right, and with that, I guess we're going to wrap this up on this cold, brutal New Year's Eve and all head out and party. So where, where are you doing tonight to, to celebrate the end of 2017? Um, there's, uh, there's uh, every year in Ottawa, near quite near where I live, there's a... There's a Scottish uh, celebration. It's like uh, what's it called, Hogamani or something? Some some big party, you know, with uh, bagpipers and kilt and kilts. Uh, they will they'll be free a bit cold t today. You know, my <laughs> twenty. <laughs> you know, they'll um, yeah, they'll turn into popsicles um, or you know, basically uh, yeah, it's it's. Uh, so that's so what you're off to do. I'll probably go by there, um, may go to, a, you know, there's a party, may drop in at a party, or sometimes just have a pretty quiet uh, New Year's, right? So. Well, do as our esteemed president, Donald Trump, is telling us all, bundle up. Yes, bundle and up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and, and, and stay safe, uh, you know, don't let the polar vortex uh, get you, right? Yes, that, that's what I'm worried about. Anyway, stick around for just a minute, but I'm going to wrap this up, guys, and I want to thank Paul Beckwith for sharing, good Lord, more than an hour of his time being our very first guest, although he doesn't call himself a doomer. Uh, I will say he is a voice from the doomosphere, but an optimistic one, so uh, this will be a fine way to kick off my new feature in 2018, and we look forward to another year of you fighting the good fight. Paul Beckwith. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Bye now. Goodbye. All right. And we do want to thank Paul one more time. I had to do a little bit of work on the technical problems. I tried to iron some of them out. Hopefully, I will be working on this in the near future. <clears throat> one of my New Year's resolutions. And next week, I think I have the pleasure of bringing Ian Baxter. If you don't know Ian Baxter, make sure you tune in next Tuesday night, January 9th, and we will hear from Ian, and I believe James Howard Kunstler is in the lineup for Tuesday, January 16th. Thanks for stopping by Voices of the Doomosphere. Bye, guys.